So the installation of WK8 R2.2 is complete. So as we typically would with a Windows 2008 install, we get prompted to change our user password. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK and set my password. Now, if we want to save time in provisioning virtual machines in the future, what we really want to do is rather than starting from an ISO every time of the OS install media, is get a virtual machine set up exactly the way we want and then duplicate it. Get VMware tools installed, get whatever customizations we want to have made installed, and so on. So as you can see, I've got quite a bit of video lag on my system. This is exacerbated by the fact that I don't have VMware tools installed, but I also am running a virtual machine inside a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine. So it's going to be imperative that we get VMware tools installed as quickly as possible so that we get virtualization optimized drivers. So if I want to do that, now that I'm logged in here, if we go take a quick look at device manager, we'll see that we've got various generic devices loaded and maybe a few other things that it doesn't have a driver for because we haven't installed VMware tools yet. So I'm going to open the server manager and then from diagnostics, I'm just going to go ahead and open device manager. So you can see that we've got a base system device that's not recognized. And then other than that, everything looks okay. I mean, there's no problems, but you can see that we're running like a standard VGA graphics adapter and we're not necessarily doing anything very special in terms of any of the other system devices or anything. It's very important the VMware Tools gets installed, not just for that video driver, but for the VMware Tools service, for example, and the various other functions that are put in by some of the system drivers and so on, for things like the balloon driver to function correctly. The hosts really need to be able to interact with the VM, and the VM Tools service is how they do that. So it's really not just a user convenience issue. It's very important that it gets done for all of your VMs. I'm going to hit Control-Alt to release my mouse out of that window, and then inside my VM menu, if I go to guest, you'll notice we have an option, install upgrade VMware tools. So you see it just inserts a virtual CD image. If you've already got a CD mounted, then it's going to potentially interfere with that. So we might have to unmount what we already had. So I'm just going to go ahead and run the setup and VMware tools gets installed. There's nothing really to do during the installation. It's all pretty straightforward. So it popped up. I'm just going to go ahead and click next. We can choose to do a complete or custom install. Basically, if you're moving between, say, ESXi server and VMware Workstation, maybe people are going to create virtual machines in Workstation, then upload them to ESXi, then it would be a good idea to install the complete package. Otherwise, you can just do the typical. But you know what? It really doesn't hurt to install the complete package, and it might make it easier for troubleshooting purposes if you have everything you need for integration with VMware Workstation. Really not a complicated installation in any way. But very important that it occur and that all that stuff's available. When that's done, we're going to require a reboot. In the future, if we want to upgrade the VM tools, we could rerun this process. Or again, as I was saying, then we can go into the properties of the VM and have it check every time the power is cycled for changes to VM tools and have them installed and rebooted automatically. So it's going to make your downtime longer. It's not an instantaneous process, but it's something that'll happen automatically when you were already down anyway. Might as well get some other useful things accomplished. One of the things you're going to notice is that a virtual machine typically is going to have a much faster restart than a physical machine. And all of the time that we normally waste for post processes and, you know, BIOS banners and initialization processes go very, very quickly. And you don't really even see any of that. I mean, it still happens, but you don't see it. So if you do want to manipulate those devices, there's ways to access them through the BIOS and things like that. It just means that maybe maintenance of our virtual machines is going to be easier to do and we can get things done with smaller maintenance windows and less downtime. So I'm going to go ahead and log in now to log into a virtual machine rather than a host, rather than using control alt delete, then we're going to use control alt insert. Now I've got virtual machines running inside virtual machines. So when I do this, things would get a little bit crazy. So what I'm going to do instead of trying to use the keyboard sequence is I'm just going to go on to the VM menu. From there, I'm going to say under guest, send control alt delete. It's just easier for me in this environment. Now that I'm in, I can say that my mouse performance is definitely much better and it's much more accurate and I can actually navigate with the thing now. So let me move my window a bit, a little bit constrained by the HD 720p format. Device manager is coming back up. So if we take a look in there, we can see that not too much has changed. You know, we still have the same kind of network adapter. We still have the same kind of CPUs. Whatever that unknown device was has disappeared. We can see we've got the LSI SAS driver and see whatever system devices have been added. But there is also the VM Tools related services. So there's VM Tools service itself and a couple of others. So if we go into services and scroll, 
we're going to find that we've got the VM tools and we can see it started and set to start automatically. It has the ability to run as local system. Now you might say, well, I don't want that. And it's, you know, just sinking my time or something like that. But it's very, very important that VM tools has effectively full control of that virtual machine. It does a lot of sneaky things in order to get the virtual machines operating system to do what the host wants it to. So for resource management and everything to work properly, it's very important that VM tools runs with absolutely high privileges. So even though you might have a policy that says services are supposed to run as local service or network service, which are very low privilege accounts, VM tools has to have high privileges. So we'll leave that as is. This really applies to all services in Windows, not just to VM tools. But if we say for whatever reason that VM tools service stops, that we want it to be recovered by restarting the service or maybe even restarting the virtual machine. When you get into VMware HA, if you have an HA cluster, HA can also monitor and heartbeat with the VM tool service. And if it doesn't detect VM tool service running, can actually coordinate the restart of that virtual machine. So as you can see, it's a little bit tricky to navigate in my windowed environment here with the screen resolutions that I'm using. So what I might find is easier is to go full screen with this virtual machine. Your video performance is definitely going to be better. And also, well, you're going to not have to deal with all those scroll bars and everything. So I'm just going to go and enter full screen. And that's going to adapt the resolution automatically for me. So you'll see we have a bit of a status bar, which we can pin up here to help remind us what machine we're connected to. We can also go in now and access the VM tools system tray icon. So if you click on the arrows here down by the clock, you'll see that we've got a VM tools icon. You want to make sure VM tools is installed. And every time you log into a virtual machine, it's kind of nice if that would just appear where we'd be able to see it. As part of customizing our VM load, let's change various things. So I'm going to just right click in the system tray and say customize notification icons. And you know what? I don't really use that action center. I do want to know if the network is up. I don't really care about sound. And I do care very much about VMware tools. So I'm going to say to always show the icon and its notifications. You can even maybe do that for the safe remove hardware wizard if you like. And if you're in different time zones and things, or if you're just recording at weird hours of the day, you may want to turn off the clock on all of your virtual machines as well. You know, you can set other icons to be off here too. So there we go. And now I've got it always available to me here. I can easily see at a glance when I log into this machine that it has VMware tools at least. And then if I go and right click on that, you know, I can say about VMware tools, I can get its details. And it tells me whether the service is running. So I don't actually have to go into Windows services to make sure that it's running because, of course, you could have the little icon installed in your system tray. But if the service is not running, then it's not doing what it needs to do. So this gives us a pretty good idea of what it looks like to install VM tools and what it gives us. You could remove it through Admiral Programs and Control Panel, but there's no real reason to do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and log off of my desktop. So if I use Control Alt Enter, I can take it out of full screen mode. And I can go ahead and close this console, and that's not going to close the virtual machine or anything. If you've used VMware Workstation, it would, but on ESXi server, it doesn't do that. Again, very important to get VMware tools installed. And now that we've got a virtual machine that's had some configuration changes made to it and has had VM tools installed, and maybe that we've patched and installed other things to meet our standard baseline requirements, maybe we want to use that as a template for other future virtual machines. And we're going to take a look at that in one of the vCenter videos later.